Good morning, friends, and welcome to Tuesday, February 15th. Harold Durfee starts us off with the Spirit of God. Tuesday's devotion is found in the Upper Room Discipline, written by Kathy Chang. Our scripture reading this morning is Genesis 45, 3 to 11 and 15. I am Joseph. Is my brother still alive? But his brothers could not answer him. So dismayed were they at his presence. And then Joseph said to his brothers, Come closer to me. And they came closer, and he said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me here to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me and do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks and your herds and all that you have. I will provide for you here, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And he kissed his, all his brothers and wept upon them, and after that his brothers talked with him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The fact that Joseph's story, the story of being sold into slavery by his own family, finding healing, and coming into power to ultimately save his people became a Broadway hit musical, and is perhaps the happiest ending to a story with an already improbable happy ending. But not everything in life ends in a neat, tidy bow. Joseph used the power he gained in Egypt to save his family, but in the process, he also consolidated power for Pharaoh. This man, who was once himself enslaved, contributes to a system that enslaves and uses enslaved labor to enrich the powerful. The story makes the author consider how her sense of justice sometimes becomes too narrow, too limited to the people and places that she holds nearest and dearest. Joseph believes his suffering was not in vain, and there is something for us to wrestle with in that proclamation. What if it is not true that everything happens for a reason? What if there is 
not a silver lining to every act of injustice or harm. Does everything happen for a reason? Or at least, at the very least, does everything happen for a reason that we can intentionally act on? Joseph's open arms and warmth to his family should inspire us all. And the forgiveness and healing that happened came from a place in time of therapy and spiritual direction cannot still access. But the author can't help but wonder how different things could be and have turned out that love and care extended the Israelites and the Canaanites. Let us pray. How can our love and influence of be forces for good in our immediate family and in our communities? We pray. Amen. Our closing hymn is, Now Thank We All Our God, verse 3. to